Hello everyone, welcome to YouTube channel where we talk all about the KIT exam. We are studying operating system in the quick revision mode, but we are studying the CPU algorithms in a detailed manner. So, the last video we understood the first come first serve algorithm, and this is the video for the practice questions about it and an important factor which is the convoy effect showed by the FCFS algorithm. First, we will solve the question. The question is right here in front of you. We have process number from P1 to P5 and their respective arrival times are given. Their respective burst time are given. We simply have to schedule over the CPU on this Gantt chart. Okay. And find out the respective values of completion time, turnaround time and the waiting time. We know that first come first serve works on the arrival time. The criteria is arrival time and it is a non-preemptive scheduling algorithm. If you want to understand the details, you can go back to the previous video. And if you're just practicing, then just do practice here. So the very first time is time zero, and the first process that look at the minimum arrival time that is time two. The time zero to time two, we don't have any process in the system, so that is something which you need to understand here that yes, at certain moment of time your CPU becomes idle. It has nothing to execute. So from time zero to two, you have no process to allocate the CPU, okay? It is sitting idle, so their throughput, it, at this moment of time, throughput is actually zero, okay? Now the time two, process P1 comes, so let's take process P1 and schedule it for the amount of time it requires. It requires four, two plus four becomes six, and the P1 gets completed, all right? Now, the next process, now we finished at time six, and look at the, Ready queue. Which process is available? None of the processes are available. The next process available is at time 8. We are only at time 6. So now from 6 to 8, again, what is going to happen? This question was important for me to cover just because of this factor. 6 to 8, again, your CPU is idle. No computation at all. At time 8, process P2 will come. Okay, P2 needs two bursts. So from 8 to 10. Okay, P2 also finished. Now, next process coming at time 20. You see, we have 10 and we, it's coming at 20. None of the process is available. So, from 10 to 20, once again, or if, because you want to maintain the... So, it's again. Okay, from 10 to 20, it's idle. Okay, now at time 20, we get the another process, that is process number 3. So process number 3 needs how much burst? Just 1. So 20 to 21 and the process 3 finished. Now, next process 21 to 30. No process available. So again 21 to 30. What is it? It's nothing but then the time to be idle for CPU. We have no process to schedule. Now, next process P4. P4 is arriving at the time 30. And how much burst is needed? It needs 3. So P4 from 32. 33. Correct? Correct. Now once again, the next process is available at 38. So what is it? What does it show? It shows the idle again. So it shows the idle again. So 33 to 38. Again, idle time. And the last process to be executed, that is P5. How much time it needs? 7 burst. Right? 7 burst. So from 38 plus 7, it becomes 45. So this is actually P5. Okay? So from time 0 to time 45, this has been your scheduling and this shows your Gantt chart where we have so many intermediate blocks where the CPU is actually idle. So after finding out the Gantt chart, now you can easily get the values of completion time, turnaround and waiting. So let's look at here, the completion time for each process, that's nothing but in the last time, okay? The, the time is finishing because it's non-preemptive, so none of the process is getting multiple chance. Each process comes and finish and terminates. So completion time for process 1 is nothing but then 6, correct? Process 2, 10, process 3, 21, process 4, 33, process 5, 45. Now interesting factor, very interesting factor here is going to be the waiting time and the turnaround time. So let's first of all find out the turnaround time which you all understand is nothing but the total amount of time a process is spending in the system. Completion minus arrival. So 6 minus 2 is 4, 10 minus 8 is 2, 21 
थर्टी वन माइनस ट्वेंटी वन थर्टी थ्री माइनस थर्टी थ्री फोर्टी फाइव माइनस थर्टी एट सेवन इफ यू जस्ट ऑब्जर्व एंड लुक एट द टर्न अराउंड टाइम क्लोजली विद बर्स टाइम यू विल फाइंड आउट इट इज एग्जैक्टली सेम एज दर्स टाइम वाई बिकॉज बिकॉज नन ऑफ द प्रोसेस हैज टू वेट ओके नन ऑफ द प्रोसेस हैज टू वेट इन फैक्ट सीपीयू वॉज वेटिंग फॉर प्रोसेस टू कम and in that duration it was nothing but then idle you see all right so now comes the waiting time and waiting time because i said none of the process has to wait so if you just want to write you can simply write 0 0 0 0 because none of the process has to wait you will say but how if you want to make sure you can simply check from turn around minus burst time 4 minus 4 0 2 minus 2 0 1 minus 1 0 3 minus 3 0 0 minus 7 simple simple why because because p1 as soon as it came you see the time 2 the time 8 20 30 38 what are these these are their respective arrival time that simply means whenever they arrived they were immediately scheduled because no other process was available all right so these these process have to wait for none of the time they waited for 0 seconds so this is how the scheduling is done and you can easily find out the average turn around time waiting time is definitely zero okay now another factor here is what is the scheduling length so you might say 45 minus 0 45 minus 0 wrong Okay, why? Because initially the very first process was available at the time two. This two, zero to two burst is idle burst. There is no execution happening here. You see, this is the time when the first process came into the system. So what it should be like? It should be forty-five minus two. That is forty-three. This is the schedule length. And now what becomes the throughput? Definitely, it's quite less. But whatever it is, so we have how many process? We have five process divided by the amount of time taken for their execution. If you want to take it in percentage, you can multiply by this hundred. Okay, you can find out the value, whatever value comes out to be. All right. I hope with this example and its practice, you get to understand how to actually implement the FCFS and what makes a difference and how you have to keep your eye on the arrival time and don't go by that. okay when it is finished immediately you can assign the next process until it is available it cannot be assigned no matter your cpu goes in the idle time let it go okay now the next thing we need to understand about the fcfs is that it reflects it shows the convoy effect uh as a disadvantage i can say that the average waiting time is more why because each process gets the chance on the cpu complete still its execution is completed now here only i will explain what the convoy effect is if at all you have mix of processes and there are very few cpu bound process and there are very much input output bound process so mix of process are there in my ready queue but the one who came first was the cpu bound process which needs a bigger length of the cpu burst all right now this process have been scheduled on the cpu and the other processes are waiting in the ready queue to get their chance okay now because the bigger process is running in the cpu the other process which are quite smaller in size and they simply may be need a single burst of cpu are waiting are waiting and waiting for a lengthier process to finish okay which ultimately results into the poor cpu utilization because if input output process input output bound process would have given the chance on the cpu initially they would have gone for their input output and they would have terminated in the meantime the cpu bound process would have been executing its cpu time so then in that case efficiency would have been more but because of a mere concept or mere criteria it makes use of that is the first come first serve that is whoever is coming first will be given chance first irrespective looking at the other criteria so what is its burst time what is its requirement we are not looking at any other fact because a bigger convoy is passing by so all the smaller jobs individual jobs have to wait for that bigger convoy to pass through okay that's why this is this is known as that fcfs shows off the convoy effect 
which ultimately result into the low or the poor CPU utilization. Also, the average waiting time, the average waiting time for a process in FCFS is quite higher than the other scheduling algorithm. So these were the smaller few things which you need to know about the FCFS. Again, I have another question right here on the board which I'm not going to solve. It's for you to practice process number from 1 to 6, their respective arrival time and their respective birth time. Solve it with the help of FCFS. I would like to know the mu as well as the L and the respective values which you can put down in the comment section. And I'll see you once again very soon in the next video with the next algorithm. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.